And we have Jason Gilchrist joining us, an ecologist with Edinburgh Napier University in the UK. Good to see you, Jason. You know, when you look at these numbers, okay, so now they've been able to grow the tiger population to 3,100. Great news. But then you see in, in 1900, just over 100 years ago, there were 100,000 tigers in the world. In 1950, there were 40,000 tigers in India. So this seems like a case where the good news is also pretty bad news. Yes, compared to historical numbers, there's been a massive uh, loss of, of tiger habitat. And that's essentially why the maximum numbers that we can support in the world today are so much lower than what we had historically. But it, it has to be celebrated, the massive increase in recent years uh, that Project Tiger has brought about. Sure. OK, so it, it, now I've read that 75 percent of all the tigers left in the world are actually in India. And so this particular conservation effort, that's why it's so important. Um, but when you also look at how the rate of increase in the numbers has been over the past few years, that has been slowing down. So again, while it's good news, what do you think is the best that we can expect in this day and age for an animal of this size that needs a lot of habitat? Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head there. We're dealing with a large carnivore, which requires a large habitat. It requires um, prey within that habitat to support it. And the reality is, not just for tigers, but for many large carnivores around the world, that accommodating uh, them alongside people um, is a real problem. So it's really about making the best job that we can um, of what's available. So I think India has done a fantastic job, as acknowledged in the segment there, of increasing um, the number of tiger reserves and the coverage. Uh, they're working on habitat corridors to allow the movement um, of tigers and they're translocating tigers between areas um, to maximize genetic diversity. So it's very much about trying to do the best we can within the space that we have. And that has to also acknowledge um, people and accommodating people within the landscape um, as well as the animals themselves. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it just gets so much harder when you look at how society and populations have changed. And when you think that over the last hundred years, tigers have lost more than 90 percent of their habitats, how difficult is it to make these kinds of efforts really work over time? It's incredibly difficult. If we compare it, for example, with the African lion, uh, we've seen a 70% uh, decrease um, in their populations in the last um, 50 years, there or thereabouts. So the success in terms of tiger conservation in comparison um, is remarkable. Uh, yeah, how well can we do going forward? Uh, ideally, um, it's about it's about maximizing habitat corridors and it's about maximizing genetic diversity and working as much as we can wherever there are large carnivores with local populations so that local populations, i.e. people, are, are on board to minimize conflict and also to maximize the benefits of living alongside large carnivores, which can, for example, be via ecotourism, um, uh, economic input. Yeah, when you look at those challenges, any good news on this front is great to hear. All right, Jason, thanks so much. Thank you.